Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. And as promised, I was going to do a comparison between Photoshop Elements 2018, which we have here on your left. Let me uh, just bring this up about Elements here. Oop. <laughs> about Elements. There's 2018, which is on your left. And on your right, we have 2020, Photoshop Elements 2020. Okay. So sit back, relax. This is going to be a little bit longer video, so you can always uh, fast forward through the sections you don't care about, and you can uh, follow along here with me so we can uh, just do a little comparison on these uh, two different versions. So the first thing we have here is, for whatever reason, I don't know why that is. So zoomed out. We're going to zoom this back to 25. So, And we'll talk about these little uh, features and stuff here, how you use them throughout the course of the uh, videos here on YouTube. But what I wanted to show you first was um, just around the interfaces. Now we are in the editor is where we are sitting right now. We are not no longer in the organizer. And the first thing I noticed between 2020 here on your right and 2018 is they took away the eLive. So the eLive used to be different uh, in 2018, and I believe it was in 2019. It would just give you lessons and show you how to do things. But that's why you're watching these videos. So we don't need that anyway. So we are on the quick edit right here. And you can see on 2020s, there's also the quick edit. So looking down here and comparing the two, I'm seeing the exact same menus. Um, we are on, let's go back. We'll first start with uh, adjustments. Okay, get both of these lined up the same. So I'm seeing the same stuff here. Smart fix, if I pull this menu down, uh, I see the exact same uh, menuing system and the exact same uh, setup as is on both versions. So that's smart fix. Bring this up. We have exposure. And we have exposure over here. Again, we are on the effects on the quick edit. And if anybody's been following my videos for the last uh, years, years of doing these, I like the smart fixes for some touch-up stuff. It just makes it really easy to touch stuff up there. And I'm just clicking through these, making sure everything looks like it's the same. There's color. There's color over here. Yep, that's all the same. So, so far under adjustments, it seems like everything is going on. Everything is the same. There's balance. And folks, this is two whole versions different, right? So remember, I didn't go to 2019. I went from 2018 to 2020 because of uh, really just a couple key features in here I really liked. And I thought it would be worth the upgrade. So nothing different under that menu. The next menu we have down here is the FX effects. The FX effects over here. And these just allow us to do different things. And we'll talk about these in the video. So we're not going to go about it here. This is just a comparison to see if there's anything different in here. And it looks like they kept everything exactly the same. Under textures. Here's our textures of 2018. Now, you would think in 2020 there'd be a lot more textures, right? Well, no, we might be wrong. But I do show you in the course of the videos, we will learn somewhere along the line. If you're a little bit impatient, you can go back and see how to add textures. Um, I love taking pictures of textures when I'm out in the field just to have extra ones to do things with. Okay, we'll go to frames. Now, you think over here frames, we have more frames, right? Uh, eh, no, no extra frames. So... And on the side here of our quick edit, we have uh, the quick selection tool, red eye removal tool, which probably nobody even uses anymore. Uh, this is the white and teeth brush. This is the straightening tool. This is the text tool. The spot healing tool is right here. The spot healing brush tool, which is the same on both versions. The crop tool and the move tool. So those are all the same. Everything stayed the same there. And if we look down at the bottom, we have the photo bin, the tools options, the undo, the redo, the rotate, and the organizer. Now I see they did add in 2020 here, the home screen button. 
So if you click on the home screen button, it brings you back to the screen that you probably never want to use anyway. So that's what the home screen button will do for you. Let's go ahead to the guided edit. And a lot of you know that I truly love the guided edit. And the reason I do is it just makes it so darn easy to do those uh, interesting, I call them wall hangers or uh, creating your books, you know, interesting ways of working with your photos. And it's just very, very quick. So let's see if they added anything new here. Well, at the top, we have basic color, black and white, fun edits, special edits, and photo merge. And we have the same thing along the top on 2020. Now, if we dig into these, we're going to look at, uh, here's before, I'm sorry, I'm sorry uh, brightness and contrast, brightness and contrast, correct skin tone, correct skin tone, crop your photo, crop your photo, everything here looks so far so good, levels, lighten and darken, resize your photo, oh wait, there's a new one here called object removal, and if we slide our mouse, we can see that we can do some removal now. Okay, that's something new. That's very nice. Then we go to resize your photo, which is this one. Uh, rotate and straighten. There's rotate and straighten. Sharpen we have. There's sharpen. Scroll down this one. And vignette. And there's vignette in that one. So the only thing I see they added new here uh, in your quick edit was object removal. And we all want to do that times to time. So I thought that was very interesting to have that in there. The next thing we're going to look at is the expert mode. Here is the expert mode. Let's go back to the expert mode on 2020. And we see here that we have uh, the same, pretty much the same tool palette. Uh, there is the quick selection tool. And there is the uh, magic wand tool over here. So they did change that up a little bit. Under the enhanced menus, I see everything is the same under the enhanced menus. Everything looks the same there. And if we click on that, we look down here at the bottom and the uh, healing brush, everything is the same. Let's see where I am there. Okay, everything down there looks the same. The drawing tools looks like they are all the same there. There are the same drawing tools. And yep, so all the drawing tools are there also. Uh, modify, the modified tools are all the same and the color palettes are all the same. So then we have to the right here is the layers palette, which we'll click the layers palette on over here. There's the layers palette. Under effects, see if we have the same effects. Go to the effects palette over here. Oops, turn that back on. Uh, it's kind of hard to keep these both up here at the same time. Glow, monotone color, painting, pixels. Let's see if it looks the same over here. Glow, monotone, painting. But yep, everything looks the same over there. We can go to filters. Here's your filters. We can see the filters look uh, basically the same. Pixelate, render. Okay, that looks pretty good. Over here, yep, that looks all the same. Styles. Everybody knows I love styles when I'm doing text work. Huh? I love the bevels. Uh, patterns. Okay. Pattern effects. Show all. Yep. Those all look the same. Under graphics. Let's go to graphics over here. These are all your background graphics, and they all look pretty much the same. I mean, there's a ton of them in there you can use for backgrounds, and we'll be playing with those throughout the videos to learn more about that. There is a ton of frames in here if you ever want to use frames. The frames look about the same here. Now, if you remember, we did talk initially in the beginning video about some of the updates and changes uh, to the new Photoshop Elements 2020. And the one thing I think was the most uh, or the best reason for upgrading was the uh, the selection tool. You can just select a person and uh, have that selection made. So 
And there's your graphics there. There's your graphics here. They actually did cut way back on the graphics. So this one, yeah, 2019 seems to have a lot more graphics. Shapes. There's a ton of shapes you can use and play with in your, in your photos. Over here also in 2020, lots of tons of uh, shapes and everything. A lot of text and fonts, different kind of text here if you want to use text. And a lot of new, no new ones in there. So there you get that. So under create. Let's see what we got here. Slideshow, photo prints, photo book, greeting cards, calendars, everything in there looks the same. Over here, everything looks the same. Look under share of 2018. You got Facebook, Flickr, and Twitter. And under here, you got Flickr and Twitter. Flickr and Twitter. So if you see over here, they took out Facebook. I don't know why that happened, but they did take out Facebook. So that's pretty interesting to note. So we can see that most of the stuff, and if you go into more here, what that is, came up over there, but more is basically all the same stuff on both sides. I just tell you that. I know we're a little bit off the screen there. So, but yeah, the quick selection thing and uh, being able to remove stuff easily, which we could always do anyway with the clone stamping tools um, and the uh, smart healing brushes, you can always remove stuff. So other than that... We will play with the new features. Uh, we'll teach you more about uh, turn that stuff off. I will teach you more about each of the tools and how they work and what we can do with those tools. And we will show you the new stuff along the way. But I mean, as far as the base layout of the editor, uh, I think you're gonna be able to get around okay. If you if you know any earlier version, I think the editor stayed pretty much the same from what I can see. And a couple of those new tools are added in there. Like I said, in the guided edit area uh, with the before and after the object removal tool here so uh, we will play with that also um, I don't think we didn't really go through any of these other ones did we let's go through some of these other ones color color those all stayed the same black and white and black and white um, black and white new uh, black and white pop selection uh, high key, line drawing, and low key. That all stayed the same. Fun edits. Look at here. Double exposure. Old fashioned. Oh, wait. Uh, there's something different they just threw in there on us. The meme maker. So now you can make your own memes. Look how cool that. My wife loves to do this on uh, Snapchat. She makes uh, Snapchat memes all the time. So there's a meme maker under fun edits. Uh, let's see what else they had here. Um, this is something new also. Check this out. Multi-photo text. These are fun too. When you could take uh, text, and, and I've created these in the past. Manually, we've done this. But when you take your photos and make letters with them, I think that is just really a cool edit. That's a lot of fun. So there's something new for you. Old-fashioned photos in the old version, Out of Bounds, has been there for, for a while. Uh, Painterly has been around for a while. Uh, partial Sketch is there. Um, the Pattern Brush is something new also. This is something new we'll be looking at. Um, I have done this in the past. I told you this in a prior video. Uh, I think under the uh, new stuff or something, we talked about it. But Pattern Brushes, a lot of times you can find brushes out there and actually use your brush tool to make a pattern, but these are really cool the way these work, and we'll look at that down the road, how, how it actually uh, works out, but this is just a kind of getting to know video, getting to know everything here. Photo text, picture stack they have, pop art they have, uh, the puzzle effect, we've done that in the past, that was a lot of fun, I love making puzzles with my photos. Um, sharp outlay effect is in both versions, reflection as I said is there, 
Speed Effect, the Speed Pan, that came out a few years ago. That might have even been 2019, the Speed Pan uh, right here. I love it because it blurs the background out, right? And it makes it look like they're running faster. Just like your Speed Effect, when you put like little jet things on the back of them with the color. Just amazing stuff. Zoom Burst Effect and Zoom Burst Effect. Here's some special edits. Again, we're under Guided Edit. There's going to be a lot to go over here, right? We're going to have a lot to do uh, together. Uh, let's go back up here. Um, replace background. Um, replace background is still here. It's very easy to do. You know I love replacing my backgrounds. Depth of field. Frame creator. Um, the Orton effect. I've always loved the Orton effect. I've used this in the past. And that's just a very nice effect. Uh, portrait perfect is still there. There's also some a couple new uh, portrait touch-up tools. We'll talk about those as we go through the videos. Recompose, you know, where you can move somebody closer if they're farther away. Recompose was in there before. Restore old photos was there. I've done that by manually before. We've done a lot of that. Um, scratches and blemishes is there. Text border overlay. Uh, text border overlay is a new one, right? We didn't have that before. So there's a border. You can put some text on it there. I mean, that, those are just nice edits. You know, it's really cool stuff to play with. Um, tilt Shift. I've always loved Tilt Shift. It always made me feel like you're making like a Mr. Rogers Neighborhood World. So that's always a lot of fun. You know, watercolor. Under Photo Merge, did anything come out new in Photo Merge? Let's take a peek at that real quick. Uh, Photo Merge Composer. That's this one. Photo Merge Exposure. Faces. Uh, group shot there's your photo merge group shot we can do uh, the scene cleaner you know we could do that with the removal tool also but you can remove somebody from your scene it's very important to be able to do that and photo merge so there's all the stuff under guided edit with a couple of the new tools i just showed you there so let's go back to expert mode and we'll just uh clear this video up there i told you it was going to be a little bit longer video i'm sorry about that i always get complaints from people either a jack you talk too much i'm sorry that's how i teach or b uh, jack the video is too long i'm sorry about that also sometimes uh you have to have a longer video to enable me to get all this information out there to you so you know uh, work with me here like i said if it gets too boring if anything gets too drug out you can always fast forward to the videos. It's always an option. So, you know, I want to hear positive feedback. I want positive comments from everybody out there. And um, I'm doing the best I can, but I want to bring these videos to you via YouTube. So if you're not subscribed to the videos, I would suggest you subscribe to the video. And then as I post new ones, you will be notified. And once again, don't forget, I will work at some point. Right now, I'm going to stress. I'm trying to get the YouTube videos up uh, now. But if you want to see um, the entire lessons and build out of Photoshop Elements and how to use it with no commercial interruptions, check out jtclearning.com. Yes, it is paid content, but I keep them very inexpensive for you to watch those. So, And we will talk down the road if you need. If, if you have a slow internet connection, we will talk down the road. And if you need to have a DVD mailed to you, uh, we will try to remedy that and work out something for you also. I want to be able to work with everybody out there uh, on this brand new series. I'm really excited about Photoshop Elements 2020 and bringing you the lessons. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Bye for now.